Welcome back everybody to linuxacademy.com. My name is Terry. In today's course we continue our preparation for the Linux Foundation Certified System Administration exam. In this video we're going to talk a little bit more about how to edit and manipulate text files from the command line. Mainly because we didn't have an opportunity to explore all of the particular command line ways of manipulating a, a text file, especially we didn't get a chance to talk about VI. So VI or VIM stands for a, it's, it's a, the common text editor for editing text, although um, you've probably heard of Nano as well. We're going to concentrate at least in the first part of this video on VI. So if you use VI or VIM, it really doesn't matter because they both use the same, uh, the same command shortcuts. VIM just stands for VI improved. Um, some people prefer it because of some of the advanced functionality it has for uh, plugins specifically to highlight source code, uh, etc. So whether you use VI or Vim in this case, for everything we're going to be doing here, it's fine. And it doesn't matter the distribution, VI or Vim is available in all distributions. So what we've done here on our system is we've created a directory called examples. So let's go into our examples directory and we have a file called my text. So let's go ahead and enter the text file using our editor. And in my case, I, I like to use Vim, but again, VI would be just fine. So we're going to do a VI on my text.txt and I've got some stuff in here. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system, some numbers, um, some nonsense lines, uh, world peace, world unity, etc. This is, and actually I created it using the VI text editor. So as we're going up and down here, you'll notice that there's two specific modes that VI supports. One is called command mode, which allows you to navigate around the file and, and enter VI commands. And VI commands can be described as case sensitive combinations of one or more letters. Almost all of them are pre can be prefixed with a number to repeat the command a certain number of times. In EX mode or executable mode, we can manipulate the files themselves, including saving a current file and running uh, external programs. And to enter this mode, you type a colon. So in here, by default, we're in command mode. We actually can move around within the file itself using our arrow keys. We're not going to be making any changes here because we're in command mode. Anything that we do is going to have an effect on the file based on the definition of the shortcut that we press. If we want to execute something, for example, if we wanted to save, we would hit the escape key. And then we'll see that when we hit colon, the, t the cursor is down here at the bottom. And this is where we can enter uh, particular commands for writing a file, for quitting a file, for quitting right now without a warning even if I've made a change etc. So now that I'm back in the file here, the most common command mode that you'll use in VI is I. In I, and you'll see this at the bottom left hand side of our file, you'll notice over here on the right hand side of our file it tells us the line and we're at the top of the file and we're at uh, uh, line number two. And you'll see that those lines change as we change both the line and the character. You'll see that we were at character 4, we're on line 7, character 5, etc. Now if I want to insert something in my file, I put the cursor where I want to insert it and I hit the I key. And you'll notice in bold down here at the bottom, I say that there's, there's an insert. It tells you that you're in insert mode. Now I can type. So I can hit enter, now I can type. And now when I want to get out of command mode from insert, so in other words, I just want to re-enter command mode so that I can use my shortcuts, I simply hit the escape key. And now anything I type is based on the shortcut that that key is assigned, and I simply move around with my arrow keys. Now if I want to delete something, what might you think the shortcut command for that would be? It, would, it is indeed D. So if I want to delete a single character, I just hit the D key. If I want to delete a full line, I do it twice. Now if I want to 
insert something after the line that I'm on, rather than doing an I and navigating to the end of the line, and then pressing enter, there are two ways that I can do something. If I want to do something at the end of the word C, if I want to put C salt shore, I can simply hit A, which means append, so it moves to the next character, and you'll see the insert, and now I can put C salt and go back to my command mode. Now if I want to delete the entire line, as I said I would do DD, but if I want to insert a line between this one and the next one and start entering text there, rather than going to the end, hitting A and hitting enter, which I can do, anywhere in the line that I want the next line to be inserted under, I hit the O key. And O simply will insert a blank line at the, the next point after the line that I'm my cursor is in. And then I can start typing. So here I go, start typing, and then I'm back to command mode. Now if I want to save my file, then I can hit escape colon W, and it will, as you can see, write the text file. 29 lines, 448 characters, called mytext.txt. Now if I want to write a text file and then quit, escape colon wq, then it will dump me back out to the command line. Let's go back in here and let's make a change and see what happens if I make a change. So if I make a change and I just do quit, it says no write since the last change, meaning I've made a change to the file and I haven't written it. So if I want to quit without worrying about being prompted that I've made a write to the file, I can override that warning by doing an exclamation point at the end. I can also do a WQ exclamation point, which means immediately write and quit no matter what else is going on. So I've written that file and I've dumped back out. Now some of the other things that you'll have is you're going to want to copy and paste, for example, within your file. So you're going to so just like any text editor, what you're going you're you're going to use your text editor for is you're going to copy and paste things and move things around from within VI. And VI supports copy paste just like any text editor would using some combination of the Y key and a, either a letter or a number that tells Y what to do. And yank or Y means yank uh, either a current line, a number of characters, etc. So hitting the escape key to make sure you're in command mode, navigating to the line that we want to copy, and let's say that it's here. Let's do YY, which will yank or copy the entire current line, which we've now done. Now we're going to insert a blank line. And now all I want to do is I want to paste right here what I copied. So I can do a P, once I'm in command mode, a P right here, which will paste after my cursor, or I can do a capital P, which will paste it before my cursor. So Let's delete the lines here again. We'll go to an O and make sure that we're in command mode. And we'll do a capital P, which again, pastes before the blank line. We'll go over here, which if we do a P, pastes after the blank line. So you'll find that many of the commands, whether they're capital or lowercase, will do something either before or after. Now I can also undo that command in the last line by doing a capital U if the cursor is still on the line, for example. And if I do a regular U, then I can continue to step back through all of the changes that I've made to the file throughout. Now if I want to find a particular value in, my, in, in the file, Make sure you're in command mode by hitting an escape, and in this case we're going to hit the slash key. 
And the slash key is basically the way of searching for something in the system. So if I want to find um, the first occurrence of the word test, I simply do a slash and test, and it will tell me that there it is at the top. Now, if I want to do a slash, if, if I wanted to, for example, find a more common occurrence, let's say the, there's the first occurrence of the word the. And if I do slash again, and I don't have to retype the word the, in fact, if I retype the word the, it's just going to give me the next occurrence, but I can shortcut that by just doing a slash and a slash and a slash, and it'll continue to give me occurrences of the last thing that I search until I type in a new search. So these are the most common components for copying, pasting, saving, and moving around your VI system for manipulating a text file. So let's go ahead and save this. And there are a ton more shortcuts. And in fact, VI can and does have um, multiple videos and could have a course, depending on if you're an application developer, with all of the plugins for it. But this gives you the basics that you need for manipulating those files at the command line. So what we want to talk about next is a couple of other utilities. And a good example of a manipulation of the command or of the text files from the command line is using an application or a utility called set and it stands for stream editor. So a stream editor really is used to perform basic test manipulation on an input stream or a file as long as it's input from a pipe. So probably the more basic and popular use of set is, is character substitution. So let's go ahead and look at, for example, our mybackup.txt file. Let's cat mybackup.txt. And we'll see that, uh, for example, we have um, score and seven years ago our forefathers brought forth. Let's say that I wanted to replace all of the S's in this file with a number letter with a with the, the all the lowercase s's with an uppercase s so the said basic syntax says perform the substitution in the order that it's listed so for example if we do a said all said commands have to be preceded with this back tick and start with the letter s because that's the command mode that it's going to be then we escape the character that we want to replace, in this case, the S. And then we escape with what we want to replace it with, which in this case is the capital S. And then we want it to run that particular substitution. And what file do we want it to run on? Well, we want it to run on the mytext.txt. At this point, we could pipe that input out to another file, but let's just see what it looks like on the screen. So now we can see that Sammy sells seashells by the sea salt shore. Now is the time. So we've got all of the S's in our particular file have now been replaced with capital S's. Now most of the time you'll want to replace entire words with another word. So for example, if we wanted to uh, said replace the word world with globe, for example, then all we have to do is put in the actual text of what we want to replace. And now the word world, where we had world peace, world unity, world sanity, world hunger, and world war is now globe for all of those um, replacements. So set is a powerful command for manipulating text files and doing replacements of text files from one place to another. And again, although we've been piping those out or having the output go to our account, our console, we could say that, for example, that uh, is written to a new file called transform.txt. And if we do a cat on transform.txt, now we have a permanent copy of that transformation from world to globe. And you'll notice that in this case, the S's are not capitalized, and that's because we only did that one at the console and we didn't write it out to a file.
So the next command I want to talk about is the unique command. It allows us to report and remove duplicate lines in a file by writing to um, the console or standard out. But it doesn't detect repeated lines unless they're adjacent. So unique is commonly used along with sort in order to sort the results of its output. By default, sort takes the first field that's separated by spaces as a key field, and to specify a different key field, you use the dash K option. So for example, if we wanted to look at the directory etc, we can do a du.sch and the directory. It'll return the disk space and subdirectories and files within it. So if we did a du-sch on the etsy directory, or let's do var since it's a larger should be a larger directory. And we see that we have space and the total size of that particular directory. Now from within the home directory that might be a, a better place because we've got subdirectories um, within it but it's only 328k in size. So the largest directory in this case is dash or slash uh, var. Summarizing that, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Let's do a du-sch on var star, and that should show us all of the individual directories rather than a rollup. But what if I want to re review those directories in the order of size rather than the alphabetical order that they're being listed at? Well, all I need to do in this case is pass it to the sort function dash h, which will tell it to sort by the size of that particular directory. And now I can see that I've been sorted from 0 all the way to 575 rather than in the alphabetical order that you would normally expect. Now what I might want to do, for, especially from a log file, let's see what I have, what log files I have available to me. So I've got the syslog for example. If we cat out the syslog, we'll see that there's a whole bunch of stuff in it. Now what might be a, a good thing to know is if, if we can count the number of events or the number of characters um, within a log, say for example the first X number of characters uh, of each line, and then we can add output by the number of occurrences so that we can see a, a, a cleaner output of that particular log file. So I could do a cat on the syslog, and then I can pipe that to the unique dash C, dash W, and say the first six characters. So when we review that, we're saying perform the comparison using the first six characters, which is dash W, C, or dash W6, of each line, and then prefix each output line by the number of occurrences. And then that tells us that we've got 1,021 occurrences of, of the first six characters here, We've got 974, 1708 of this one, and 900, or 915 of this one. It's good for us to know that these particular commands occur this number of times on this number of characters. So that I know for those dates, for example, December 29th, December 7th, August 6th, August 15th, I probably booted the system because that's when the rsyslog service would have started. It's just a way for me to be able to get information uh, about a particular file. Other things that we could do is, is for example is I could then sort that output so that output is sorted right now it's just sorted by default but if I wanted to do a sort dash H now I'm sorting by the the size here in reverse order so 915, 974 regardless of whether the f alphabetical order is followed, in this case August 15th, December 29th, December 7th, obviously I'm sorting by a, a particular order based on the number of occurrences from within this command. So as you can see the, there are continue to be a number of commands that we can use to manipulate and edit text files at the command line and used in conjunction with those we've already gone after, you, you, you can either use editors or command utilities that are available in Linux in order to manipulate your 
text files and your streamed text files at the command line. That's all there is to it. My name is Terry for Linux Academy.